is going to be for Elam Bible Institute and College apologetics class, our final project uh, based on the humanist article. Uh, so I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, the article was written by Joseph Sommer, uh, I believe this year, and it can be found on the website that I will have posted at the end. So anyway, Sommer makes some claims about Christianity and about God, and um, we know that what he is claiming, what the humanists are claiming, is of course false. Um, but what we've been learning in apologetics is how to approach those questions or those oppositions and overcome those obstacles in a um, godly and biblical way. Um, one of the claims that Sommer makes about humanists is the so-called contradictions um, in the Bible, and specifically he calls out the account of creation. And his problem is that uh, in the creation story in Genesis, he says that it seems to uh, switch the order of creation and the order in which God did everything. Um, but the truth of the matter is that chapter 1 of Genesis really lays out, okay, this is the basic idea of what God did um, in the, those six days of creation. And then chapter 2 gets into a little more detail, kind of does seem like maybe the author is backtracking a little bit, but any writer is going to do that when they're retelling an account of something or giving an account of something you know you're going to have your introduction and then your body paragraphs your your um, following paragraphs are going to support your thesis or whatever statement you made in the introduction and that's just what uh, the author of Genesis Moses that's what Moses is doing here He's not necessarily contradicting himself, or he's not contradicting himself. He's just laying a groundwork in chapter 1 and then explaining it more in detail in chapter 2. And then Sommer also claims that God is cruel and that he uses uh, repeated, he, or he uses disproportionate punishment and repeatedly violates his uh, moral precept by harming innocent people and again uh, we know that this is not true that the truth of the matter is that God doesn't demand or force us to love and obey him uh, we have that choice however we know that when we willingly uh, dishonor God when we willingly disobey God then there are consequences for our sins. There are consequences for rejecting God. And if God is all holy and sovereign, then there has to be um, absolute and, and sovereign punishments for our rejection of him. And as we see in Isaiah 55, that God's ways are not man's ways. Um, that God's ways are higher than in our ways. And then there's uh, uh, other verses that um, kind of say the same thing. Um, you look in uh, the story of Job, you know, there's universal consequences and punishment for disobeying God. Um, we see that in Jeremiah 17 that our hearts are deceitfully wicked and that we, we don't even understand what's in our hearts. And Proverbs 4.23 tells us that um, if our hearts are full of evil, then we're going to do evil. If our hearts are full of good, that can only come from God, then we're going to do good. Um, and then there's many examples throughout Exodus and Romans 9.18 also confirms this, that um, God will allow certain people's hearts to be hardened in order to bring about his good and perfect will. 
and he knows who will reject him and he knows who will um, choose to receive him again it's his sovereignty and his omniscience that we don't we there's no other way that we can fully comprehend or understand that um, then Sommer also claims that there's a problem with the supernatural and that the Bible uh, through the supernatural discourages a scientific approach to problems and that people who believe in the involvement of the supernatural are Ill illiterate and um, primitive. The truth of the matter is that God created both the physical and the supernatural and that science and uh, faith actually go hand in hand. Um, God himself is supernatural and metaphysical and we know um, that what's happening in the spiritual realm uh, directly affects and impacts what happens in the physical realm. And we also know that in the physical realm, uh, we grant and deny permissions for things to be done uh, through prayer and through sin. According to uh, cslewis.org, in the article, Science and Christian Faith, Conflict or Cooperation, uh, we know that uh, modern science that arose throughout the 16th and 17th centuries uh, were a result of devout Christian theologians and uh, f uh, philosophers who wanted to explore and, and discover the physical world that God created for us. And that article also goes into some presuppositions uh, for modern science, which all four of those presuppositions, um, they need a greater and supernatural uh, component to exist and to continue to exist, and they also display the true nature of God himself. And then, um, according to Tim Morey's book, Embodying Our Faith, um, our balanced approach to evangelism uh, through truth and love and showing actual Christ-likeness can challenge humanism in that the humanist will see uh, what it truly means to be a follower of Christ and um, will have the opportunity to experience Christ for themselves and see that the people who have done evil things in the name of Christ were in fact wrong. They were wrong. It wasn't that God was being cruel. It was that people were misusing God and the Bible to do evil things. And then according to Mark Clark in The Problem of God, uh, nothing in physical science can actually disprove God. And in fact, the more science delves deeper into the workings of the universe, the more we find rational and logical explanations for the existence of God. Um, and as far as evil and suffering are concerned, we have to understand that God is holy and that apart from God, in the absence of God, when we choose to be absent from God, when we choose to reject God, we are allowing that evil and that suffering to happen. And it all goes back to the fall of mankind when we decided that we knew better than God and that we were going to try to rise above God and we rejected him and thus we allowed evil and suffering to enter the world but without um, an absolute moral and good being there cannot be evil and suffering so if God weren't in existence there would be no evil there would be no good there would just be and we know that that is not the case morality and goodness have to come from somewhere and they have to come from someone who is perfect and the only one like that is God um, that basically is how I would approach or how I would begin to approach um, reasoning with a humanist and their contradictions or their um, concerns with the existence of God and the legitimacy of the Bible. So we have to handle it 
with grace, but we also have to be able to speak the truth 